This video presentation is made possible by the SLO County Department of Education and the SLO Co-Arts Collaborative. For over a century, the Central Coast of California has been a haven for people from all walks of life. Pioneers, entrepreneurs, farmers, innovators, artists, dreamers. People escaping the city life to find beautiful landscapes, rich culture, seeking prosperity, and most importantly, joy. For a lot of us, we find joy in art, whether we're makers or just lucky enough to enjoy the art of others. Hi, I'm Peter Henry Schroeder. I'm a local documentary filmmaker here in San Luis Obispo County. I invite you to come with me now as we actually get to go talk to some of these artists firsthand and learn about what makes them tick. What are some of the challenges they face and how do they do this on a day-to-day -day basis? Where does their inspiration come from and how do they actually find the joy in their art? What really gives them that creative juice? My name is Jeff Clausen. I like making things, so I do paintings, I do screen printing, I like designing all kinds of art merchandise like stickers and uh, zines and that sort of thing. So anything I can put my artwork on, I'm into. I didn't go to art school. I went to junior college for a couple years, which was kind of to please my parents. And then after that, it was just wanting to make artwork full time. I think all kids always draw. And then at some point they just find other interests and for some reason I just kept going. When I was young, I did not like pencils. Like I always wanted to draw with a pen for some reason. Since I couldn't erase, I was just kind of forced to work with whatever I put down on the paper. So I would purposely draw things out of proportion. At least for me, I thought you needed to make things look realistic. But if I couldn't erase, it's like, well, I'll draw one eye really small and the other eye just takes the path of the piece of paper. Or sometimes you'll make a mistake and then you have to turn it into something. So then you invent a new character that you wouldn't have thought of you know, on your own. The style just developed from not erasing. I grew up skateboarding, so I love skateboard graphics and graffiti and stuff like that. When I was 17, I kind of discovered Warhol. Maybe earlier, like I had seen his stuff, you know, that's when I started looking at art books. And I just love the whole screen print look, like the style is cool. So I taught myself how to screen print. And the first natural thing is screen printing t-shirts. And it just made sense, like, oh, it's fun to do. I can give them to friends or I can sell them for super cheap and, you know, it's like your artwork's out there. I'm all about DIY. And my parents had a pool table and it had this light, and it was just the perfect light for burning screens. So I was burning screens and my, and my parents under their, you know, on top of their pool table. It was on these chains, you could change the height. It was long enough that it covered the full screen because you have to have equal light coverage on the screen. It took some kind of trial and error and kind of figuring out, you know, how to do it. And back then, I didn't have Photoshop. It was driving to Kinko's in the middle of the night, photocopying pictures, and yeah, <laughs> it's a whole different world. I was working at a mail order skateboard company and it was awesome because as long as you answered the phone, you know, you have your little headphones, as long as you answered the phone, you could do whatever in between phone calls. I just always had a sketchbook and was just drawing constantly. Probably filled about 10 sketchbooks, just cover to cover, just drawing for hours a day, which a lot of people don't have that opportunity. Yeah, that job was great for kind of honing in my skills and drawing a lot. When I lived in San Luis Obispo, they started doing the Open Studios tour. I think this was in 99. It was their first one, and they invited me to be, you know, participate. It was like a Saturday and a Sunday, and I thought, I thought I want to make this a big deal. So I cleared all the furniture out of my apartment, turned my place into an art gallery, and did a big opening night on Friday. So I invited all my friends and family. Well, that was the first time I ever sold artwork. And uh, so yeah, but back to the do-it-yourself, you know, philosophy. It's like, I don't need to submit to art galleries. I can just do it at my house. <laughs> like, no, you know, who's gonna judge you? Who cares? So 
that was kind of my first step into, you know, selling artwork and kind of figuring out, oh, if people are buying this, I can actually maybe do this. I learned right away that in San Luis at the time, I was more of a big fish in a small pond. And then you go to Los Angeles and everybody's an artist. I was there for about four and a half years. And I was, then I was trying to submit to galleries and do stuff. And I got into a couple group shows, but nothing too serious. So I still had a day job. Yeah, you're exposed to a lot of my artwork. So I was going to art shows every weekend. You know, you see these kind of high-end artists that are selling paintings for $10,000. And you just kind of think, okay, I see a difference. You know, it's like, just the level of work is so much different. You know, they're, they're really good. You know, so you gotta try to keep up with that. And so you learn about um, just being more professional and maybe spending more time on your artwork and, you know. But on the other hand, I don't think you should compare yourself to people. So you kind of have to look at it and maybe just, you know, like don't copy or really compare, but maybe just get inspired by their work ethic. I thought I needed to be in a big city to be an artist. So it was nice to kind of come back home and realize, oh, I can do this right here in San Luis. I don't need to be in a big city. I moved back to San Luis Obispo and opened up a little shop. So it was a little upstairs art gallery. It was kind of an extension of the apartment show that I did. It was this upstairs office space and I just turned it into an art gallery and started doing art openings. And I thought, oh, this is totally fine. Just to kind of get my feet wet. Whereas before that, it wouldn't even cross my mind. But I have two galleries I have in mind that were probably two of my favorite galleries in Los Angeles, and they're both upstairs. So the whole time in San Luis, I think was about nine or 10 years. And then I moved up to Paso, and I first rented a studio at Studios on the Park. After that, we thought we should open a store in Paso, kind of like what we did in San Luis, but kind of grew up a little. So what I mean by that is in San Luis, I sold spray paint and markers and graffiti supplies and stuff like that. In Paso, let's kind of do the artwork, but then to complement the artwork, maybe home decor and books and stuff like that. I had the first store for five years and then our lease ran out. And then we had about a year break before we found this spot. After my first show, I kind of got the business sense of thinking about price points. So it's, what can I put my art on that, you know, the 14 year old that comes in, like, they can't buy the $100 painting, what can they get? And I was, since I grew up skateboarding, I loved stickers and stuff like that. So, you know, started making stickers, started doing more t-shirts, and then that just progressed into offering all kinds of different products. It's really fun to have products with artwork, so one of the most natural things is just to make t-shirts. So here's one of the shirts. That one has a bad word on it, so I'll show you this other one. <laughs> this I screen printed in my garage at home. So I've been printing t-shirts for probably 20 years. It's never been boring, I love screen printing. It's so fun when you lift the screen and you see your image on the product or poster or t-shirt or whatever, that's, that's always really fun. And then I wear hat, I've been wearing hats since I was probably in fifth grade. So I make hats with my artwork. So I have a couple different versions. This is hand painted on the hat. So it's a one of a kind original. I also do this where I have a patch put onto the hat. Once you turn your line work into stitching, a lot of things kind of change. So sometimes there's some back and forth communication, but yeah, you can find places online that just make embroidered patches. And this one's iron on. So I actually have a heat press at home where I put the patch on and then I just heat press it on there. And uh, it's pretty solid though. Uh, it stays on pretty good. I did some in the past where I had them embroidered right on the hat, but I couldn't do that at home. So I kind of like the patches and then I can sell the patches individually as well. I also have some greeting cards with my artwork. So this one's a happy birthday. This one has no words, so you can kind of use it for any occasion. 
So these are some old spray paint cans that I just had laying around and I thought it'd be fun to paint them. It's kind of a unique art piece. And then I also use a lot of house paint. So this is a house paint can. The paint's all dried up in there, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to paint those as well. And you could put a plant in there or something. <laughs> Somebody's like, you should have succulents growing out of there. Anything the paint can stick to, I like to paint just to experiment and see what happens. This is one of the newer products I think I started, which is notebooks for to-do lists or, you know, if you like to write in a journal. You can get so many things these days. This is through the Amazon print on demand. Yeah, if you ever wanna make a notebook with your photos or whatever. <laughs> then I also have these little enamel pens. I also make these wallets. So I get a print of my work and then I sew it to this vinyl. There's a spot for cash, a spot for business cards. And then one thing I do is anytime I'm in San Francisco or Los Angeles, I'll pick up all these free magazines. And so the inside of the wallet is always different. So it's always kind of a cutout of a magazine. So it's kind of like the screen print posters where I'm trying to make each piece unique somehow. That was the method I came up with for the wallets. When I talked about the apartment show, I was actually screen printing my own stickers back then. Now I just get them printed because I can do full colors when I have other people make them. So just growing up skateboarding, stickers were a total part of that kind of culture and lifestyle. So it's really fun to see my artwork on stickers. And it's just another low price point, another way to get your artwork out there. I just feel really fortunate that my artwork works on products. Art available, like a $1 button, you know, to a $1,000 painting. So there's really something for everybody. And then it also keeps things kind of fresh for me where I, I don't really get burnt out on making things because if I get tired of doing one thing, there's, you know, a dozen other things I could do. When I've researched other artists, you kind of learn they were doing the same thing. So Keith Haring was a big inspiration as far as making art accessible to more people. He lived in New York and he opened, he called it the Pop Shop. And he was selling, you know, little buttons with his artwork and just all kinds of stuff. And I thought, well, if he did it, <laughs> you know, it's cool. Just go for it. At one point when I was maybe 19, I was maybe too proud to do things like show my artwork in a coffee shop because I just thought, you know, it needs to be in a fancy gallery. It's not cool if it's in a coffee shop. And that didn't last too long. And then eventually I, I realized more people go to a coffee shop than go to an art gallery. So if the whole goal is for eyes to look at your artwork, you gotta put your artwork where there's people. This lady came in and was opening a hair salon and she wanted to put my artwork in the salon. And I thought, that'd be awesome. More people, you know, go into a hair salon than maybe an art gallery. So. I was excited and I said, yeah, let's do it. And she kind of said, well, there's a catch. We've already decorated the whole salon, but you can display your artwork in the bathroom. <laughs> and I thought, I bet a lot of people go in the bathroom. So who cares? Yeah, I'll put my artwork in the bathroom. And what's really great about this is um, some woman was getting her hair done, went to the bathroom, liked the artwork, told her husband who owns an art gallery hey, I found this artist in San Luis, you should show your work in your gallery. And it happened to be the Fiona Blue Gallery in Morro Bay, and I've had my artwork in there for probably 10 years now. Yeah, so had I said, you know, my artwork's too good to be in the bathroom, I would never have had this relationship where this gallery has consistently sold my work for the last 10 years. Like, show your artwork anywhere because you never know who's gonna see it. Don't be too proud. So a friend of mine, he was asked to do a mural at Slow Doco. And then they had all these other walls and they asked him, hey, if you know other artists that want to paint some other walls, you know, let us know and we'll do something. So that's how I got the Slow Doco mural. And 
it just kind of goes back to, I gave that guy his first art show. And then years later, he had this mural opportunity and he's like, oh, let's have Jeff paint a wall. So that, I love donuts. It's even on my business card. Did you see that? <laughs> so here's, the, here's my business card. So artist, donut eater, Thai iced tea enthusiast. So the one in San Luis was a collaboration with a friend of mine and our art styles just mesh well together. Uh, his name is Brett Brown, you should look him up. He has awesome artwork. He was kind of on a time constraint. He only had a couple hours, I think, and he was really fast. So he, he did a bunch of characters and stuff and I was working a lot slower, but I had the freedom to work until three in the morning. By the time it was done, there was just kind of a joke that he thought it was all my mural because I had done more than him. But uh, yeah, he should have stuck around and done some more stuff. <laughs> For the mural in Atascadero, they had a couple walls picked out and they said I could choose whatever wall I wanted. And I think I chose the bathroom one with the mentality of the hair salon bathroom. Where I was like, oh, a lot of people are gonna go there. But now I've kind of learned in that situation, it doesn't get as many views. But I've had a couple shots on Instagram show up where people tagged me on it. So that was kind of fun. It's like, okay, some people are still seeing it, but I think I called the wrong wall on that one. <laughs> The majority of the work is uh, on wood with the resin coating. Um, all the originals kind of start like that. And then kind of flagship pieces would be, um, I love painting squares. So a 24 inch square is maybe kind of the flagship piece. And then I do prints on wood where I adhere the print to the wood panel and I do the resin over that. So they look a lot like the original. And those are all limited editions. And, you know, business wise or art career wise, it's kind of like prints are what pay the bills. I feel like if I sell an original painting, that's kind of a bonus. This row here, these are one of a kind originals. So they're hand painted on the wood panel. And I cover them in a resin coating, which gives it this glossy shine, which I really like. This one here is a print on wood, but you really can't tell the difference. I get a print made and I mount it on the wood panel and I do the resin over that. So this one is an addition of five. So I'm only making five of this one. So it's a limited edition. A while back I came up with this idea for this kind of style. I love street art. So this is kind of my street art version of a painting where, you know when you go to the city and you'll see just posters just plastered over a construction site just like plywood wall covered with posters. That's what this is. It's a poster that I adhered to the wood panel, but then I did the drippy paint over the top. What's kind of fun about this, sometimes you'll see wrinkles in the paper and it's just a really raw kind of look, but I really like that. What's fun about that is I can sell a painting this size in this style for a lower price than if it was all hand painted. So, we want to talk about prices. If this was an original, like fully hand painted like these, but this size, it'd be priced at 300. But since it's a poster that I painted over the top, it's 150. So it's just kind of making art more accessible to people. And I don't try to trick them and tell them it's all hand painted. I let them know the whole story behind it. But I love street art and posters and stencils and stuff like that. So that was kind of my take on that. And then this big one over here. This one kind of kicked off the whole street art style in a gallery setting. So the whole background is totally original, hand painted, and then she's just kind of pasted on like a street art poster. So the idea was to make a painting big enough that's still kind of a statement piece in your house, but it's only $300 compared to say $1,000 or something really crazy. And then I'll do her in different sizes. So I'll do her in the 24 inch size and I've done 12 inch squares too. I was invited to the Tooth and Nail Winery 
just to do a live painting event where I would just kind of set up and paint for a couple hours and people could watch. And I wanted to do something that made sense in a winery, so I came up with the wine stain idea. It went over really well, so it's kind of a series I've just kept going with. I'll paint a few at a time, and then once they sell, then I'll paint another batch of them. This series here is... It's an addition of screen prints on paper, but I did a different spray paint background for each one. So the idea with this was to kind of mass produce, which is where the screen printing comes in, but then make each piece an original. So the backgrounds are different on each one, which I think is a fun way to make artwork because I get both worlds of making something unique, but then I love the whole process of screen printing. This one's a print, but this is a good example where I'll do an abstract background, and then when I do the black lines, I'll just kind of do swirls and loops, and I don't know what I'm really gonna do next. I just put a line here and a line there. And then that's when I kind of sit back and I think, okay, this shape could be a bird. So then I add the beak and I add an eye, and there's a bird there. And then I'll kind of look at another shape and you know, when I do a circle, I pretty much know it's going to be a face at some point. So there's a lot of faces in here and just kind of whimsical stuff. But that's where the stream of consciousness kind of comes in is just, it's almost like free writing where you just put stuff down, kind of reckless abandon again. And I know that I'll make it into something at some point. So that's kind of where the style developed and that's, yeah, I've been doing this kind of style for years where I just make it up as I go. So this one's obviously in progress, and it might be hard to see, but all of these characters are gonna be little bunnies. So the gold is the ears. I do the abstract background, then I do the black lines kind of really fast, and then I'll fill in some color. So all these white spots are gonna be the eyes, like you can see in this guy. And then you can see when I go over the line, that's when I kind of add the character. You know, as far as the lines getting thicker and a little more defined, this is just a good example of one in progress. Uh, this is another example of one in progress where, I guess it's kind of similar with just the abstract background and then doing the black lines kind of fast and then coming in afterwards and cleaning up the lines and adding the little whimsical touches. I'll stand over here. This is one of my favorite art tools. It is an acrylic ink. And what's really great about it is the consistency is almost like water. So it's a lot different than paint because paint is really thick. So once I discovered this, it was kind of a game changer for my painting. When you see my artwork, all the black lines that you see are done with this acrylic ink. See, this is, that's gonna turn into something now. This was an unintentional little smear that I'm gonna have to do something with. But that is how I like to make stuff. Here's an example of why the ink is so great. So this is one brush stroke. and it could keep going. I only dipped the brush the once and you get that much out of it, whereas acrylic paint is really thick and you can only go so far. I kind of have this thing I say a lot where there's no rules in making art, because there really aren't. You can do whatever you want, but I kind of have these self-imposed rules. And there's a lot of artists I see that, they might do line work like this, but they're using a paint marker. And I don't know why that really bugs me, because it's, I don't know, for some reason in my mind, I feel like you have to use a brush if it's a painting, but the markers are so much faster, but you also can't get as clean a line. So I'm pretty stuck on paint brushes. I don't know why I have that. I, sometimes I think I should just use a paint marker and I could probably be more productive, but I can't do that with a marker. Here's one thing that happens. I'll get excited because <laughs> I, 
If I'm in, a, in the right flow state, I get really excited. I'll accidentally put my hand in the ink and not notice. And then later on, I'll lay my wrist down and there's a big black smudge. That happens all the time. It used to happen more, now I'm a little more aware. There's these, there's these stages, I think, when you're making artwork where, at least for me, starting a painting is always really fun and exciting. And then sometimes it gets to a point where it almost feels like work because you're so excited, but you have to get through this work part to get to the, I guess, final destination. But doing these lines is really fun because this is when it starts coming together and I'm painting over these drips from an earlier layer that I painted. I should use a bigger brush for this, but That would mean cleaning this one, get in another one. So we'll just go through this. This is where it really gets cleaned up when you start covering that drippy layer. Oh, look, I did it. Just like I said. <laughs> now I have to turn all those little splotches into something. So what we'll do, oh. I just did a brush stroke there. That'll just maybe turn into another flower. This is why you can't really get mad. It's just turning into something. People don't realize the sacrifice sometimes that it takes to get good at something. As far as advice I might give myself, uh, maybe just patience and, you know, persist and, you know, just keep working at it. I really get inspired by artists that I think are crazy, but not not mentally crazy, but when they, they do something where I think, if this took them 50 hours, I think they're crazy. When I see the work ethic and, you know, I can see all the details and I can tell they just spent a lot of time, those are usually my favorite artists that I find most inspiring. And even if I don't like the imagery, but if it looks like, if my response when I see it is, this person's crazy for making this, I think you be hard pressed to find a success story where somebody wasn't crazy to some degree. Yeah. Like when it comes to artists, I don't feel competition with anybody. It's like I have artists that I've been friends with for a while and I feel like we kind of share our successes. You know, it's like if my friend gets some mural gig, I'm not jealous that I didn't get it. I'm stoked for him. Like, that's awesome. That means people are hiring artists for murals, which is great. So, you know, and if a friend gets an art show somewhere, that's awesome for, I think, all artists. You know, just the fact that people are taking a risk and showing somebody's artwork, it's kind of like, there's hope <laughs> for artists. I have this philosophy or this phrase that I like to use all the time, and it's jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. And that's just kind of how I've done things for, you know, kind of my whole art career. <laughs>